Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Compared to today, many thousands of years ago, Northern Europe looked very different. With mainland Europe, Scandinavia, Britain and Ireland all connected via a lost landmass known as Doggerland. It now lies at the bottom of the North Sea due to rising sea levels and a process called isostatic rebound. During the Ice Age, the weight of the ice further north forced this part of the world to bulge up. And then, when the ice melted, the land started to sink, and so, together with the rising sea levels from melting ice, every last piece of Doggerland became submerged. Doggerland was once a lush, fertile forest, home to many different species of animals and plants, as well as being home to humans, Neanderthals and other types of hominid. Kaylee from the History with Kaylee channel made a fantastic and in-depth video about Doggerland last year, which I've linked below, and I would urge you to watch it, because the subject really is a real example of lost history. What was lost is gradually being rediscovered. Whether from amateurs walking the coastlines of England and Northern Europe and finding ancient bones and artefacts, whether from fishermen trawling the North Sea, or of course from archaeologists studying the area. Some finds such as this tapering spear that was found at Clacton on the coast of England date to 400,000 years ago. These spears that were found in Germany are 300,000 years old. But it's the period between 115,000 to 27,000 years ago when Doggerland became an incredibly lush and biodiverse region with woolly mammoths, bison, horses, wolves, brown bears, saber-toothed cats, woolly rhinos and more. The land was covered with pine, birch and older trees, there were lakes, rivers and streams, and you could say it was like a real Garden of Eden for humans, Neanderthals and animals alike. In the first 10 minutes of the Doggerland video from History with Kaylee, you can see many more examples of the early discoveries, and you can learn more about them in greater detail. There is no evidence of humans living on Doggerland between 27,000 and 14,500 years ago, and that's because of a cooling climate and the growth of ice sheets in Northern Europe. But with the bolling Alarod warming, humans did migrate back from the continent and for a couple of thousand years before the Younger Dryas, Doggerland returned to being a lush savanna. There are a number of stunning finds from this period, including bones with decorated zigzag shapes running across them. But a huge volcanic eruption 12,900 years ago from the Lascia Sea volcano in Germany greatly affected Northern Europe. No tree stood upright within 4 kilometers of the volcano. The plume generated was 40 kilometers high, pyroclastic flows extended for 10 kilometers, and the thickness of tephra deposits varied from 10 to 60 meters in the 5 kilometers that surrounded the volcano. As Cayley says, plants and animals in a 60 kilometer radius of the volcano are likely to have died from the blast, and ash covered 300,000 square kilometers of land, from France to Poland and northern Italy to Sweden. Pumice has also been discovered at the bottom of the North Sea, showing that Doggerland was also affected by the blast. And then, between 100 and 200 years later, we have the onset of the Younger Dryas and the return of glacial conditions. In Northern Europe, temperatures plunged 14 degrees, and the lush forests of ancient Doggerland were then replaced with tundra. At this time, it is thought that humans only visited Doggerland for winter hunting, but as the Younger Dryas came to an end, sea level rose quickly, up to 60 metres in just 3,000 years. And starting around 9,000 years ago, Doggerland started to fall beneath the waves and quickly became an island, surrounded by the Proto-North Sea. Doggerbank, as we call this island, was a lush and fertile land with an abundance of trees, grasses, herbs and berries. Animal life was flourishing once again, and bands of hunter-gatherers were also present, maybe living or camping on the island, maybe travelling from Britain and Europe by boat. This canoe dates between 8000 and 7500 BC. It's nearly 3 metres long and half a metre wide, and it was found during the construction of a Dutch motorway in 1955. 
but Doggerland was never really out of danger. And between 6225 and 6170 BC, large submarine landslides known as the Sterega Slides triggered enormous tsunamis that battered Doggerland, as well as the eastern coast of northern Britain, as well as Europe and Scandinavia. Dogger Bank would have been well and truly devastated by this event, and in the decades that followed, the whole island became completely submerged. That was a very convoluted look at the history of Doggerland, so I would urge you to subscribe to the History with Kaylee channel, where she goes into far more detail, and is also currently doing a fascinating series on hominids. I've linked her channel in the description below. Kaylee kindly allowed me to use some of her pictures from her visit to a Doggerland Museum exhibition in the Netherlands. These pictures, together with pictures officially released by the National Museum of Antiquities, are how I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching and enjoy. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.